Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at an actual CPA simulation that was released by the AI CPA. This is a FAR simulation. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I covered, including CPA questions. On my website, you'll have access to additional material, such as true, false, PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice, and 2,000 plus CPA questions. So let's take a look at this simulation. So this is what the simulation looked like. I'll have to tell you up front that this simulation, I believe it's, it's a comprehensive and it relies on two type of knowledge. It relies on your education knowledge. Basically, this is something you might see on a long exercise in your college or and or and some of the information you might see in the real world. So this simulation I considered, it's not difficult, but it's a challenging simulation because it combines both your college knowledge and your and your practice. So if you never practice, uh, accounting, you're going to find some of the information a little bit intimidating, but that's the point of going over the simulation is to kind of make you better at approaching those simulations. So the first thing is you want to take a look at the simulation, read what's giving just to get an idea what you are looking for. So we have Oak Company. It's preparing. Let's, let's make it a little bigger. Oak Company is preparing its financial statements as of the year end, December 31st, year five. Review the exhibits above to identify any adjustments required to draft the income statement for the year ended. So basically now we're going to find out what this simulation is about. It's about the income statement and basically it's given here and we have to make some adjustments to the figures. Again, in an intermediate accounting course, I know I teach intermediate accounting. I do have exercises like this, but you're going to see the information that's giving. It's more like from the real world, but it doesn't make a difference. It's not, uh, it's, it should not be intimidating once you get used to it. To adjust the draft income statement, enter the amount associated with the adjustment in column C. So basically we have to put something in column C. Enter increases to revenues and expenses as positive, whole values and decreases as negative. Enter decreases to gain as positive, whole values and increases to gain as negative, whole value. So you have to be very careful. If no adjustment is needed for the financial statement line item, then leave the associated cell in the column C blank. That's fine. If multiple adjustment affect a single financial statement line, then enter the net amount of the adjustment. So maybe one adjustment might affect more than one line. Adjustment may not require in some rows within the draft, the draft income statement. That's fine. Amount in column D and subtotal will, will automatically calculate. So the amount will and D will automatically compute if you put an addition or a subtraction. So now you know what you want to do. You know what you are looking to do. First, real quick, look over the exhibit. First exhibit. Summary, summary of year five result for segment B. Revenue, operating expenses, transactions, or something about segment B. That's all you have to know for now. Let's look at this. This is the debt agreement memorandum. It seems we have some loan. The following summarizes the key terms of the debt arrangement entered into by Oak Corporation and National Bank January 1st, year five. We borrowed 10 million. Semi-principal repayment of a million beginning July 1st, year five. The interest rate is variable. It's the six month LIBOR as quoted at the beginning of each semi-annual plus 2.5. It's 2.5 plus LIBOR. Principal and interest payment, July and January. Maturity, January 1st, year 10. National Bank is Oak first and only lender. That's fine. So when we need something about the debt, we'll come back to this. Analytics definition here, they're giving us analytics. That's fine. We just close it. It's just a bunch of ratios. Email regarding Pine Corp sale contract. So let's look at the email. You want to scan it real quick. You may, you may want to come back to it later. So we have an email. It says senior accountant. It's from the controller to the senior accountant. While working on year end closing, please consider the following new customer contract details. Oak enter into a contract with new customer Pine to produce and deliver 20,000 product for Pine. The total transaction price was 450. The shipping terms are FOB destination. Okay. Now, uh, controller, I spoke with the manager of the shipping department at the end. I was told that the department shipped the 20,000 on December 31st. We received confirmation from the common carrier that Pine received all 20,000 product on January 2nd, year 6. Based on this information and your email below, I recorded the following journal entry. Debit account receivable, credit revenue, debit cost of goods sold of 350 
credit inventory. So this is what they did for this transaction. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of close it for now and we'll come back to it when need be, but we, now we know. Now this is the interest expense general ledger details. So this is the actual account record for the interest expense. We have the semi-annual interest payment. One is 187,500 and one is 168,750. So the total interest expense is 356,250. That's fine, we can close it. We have research and development account. So we have the opening balance was zero, engineering cost to develop specification for prototype, material consume. You want to read those because they're giving it to you for a reason. They don't give you anything for no reason. So you want to make sure you read it. Material consumed to develop a prototype, market research. Uh, just scan them. Scan them real quick. We'll come back to them later. And uh, additional information. The following list provide information for Oak and for the year end of December 31st. We're given the LIBOR rate, the six month LIBOR rate. Okay, that's that's what we are giving as information. That's good. Once we are dealing with the interest, we'll come back and we'll dig through it. So all what we did now is we looked at the information that's given. So now we are ready to start to make the adjustments based on the information. So you know what in what information you are giving and you know where to look for the information. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the income statement. And it seems here we might have to make an adjustment about revenue and cost of goods sold. How do I know this? Because here they're giving you any, a number. It means you might, it doesn't have to, but you might. Now remember, there was a sale, there was a sale transaction with regarding Pine, email regarding Pine Corporation. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that transaction and see what we are giving and what are we supposed to do, okay? So, so, so Oak entered into a contract with a new customer to produce and deliver 20,000, the total transaction. It was FOB destination. All right, so here's what we did. We shipped it. We shipped the product December 31st, year five, okay? And we recorded the following, account receivable debit, credit revenue, debit cost of goods sold credit inventory. So simply put, we recorded the transaction. Did we do the right thing? If we did the right thing, then there's nothing There's nothing we can do. There's, there's nothing to do because that's the only information we're giving about revenue and cost. If it's not, then we have to do something. Is this, do we have to do anything here? And the answer is yes. It's a simple, they're testing you about a very simple concept in accounting, and that's FOB destination versus FOB shipping. If it's FOB destination, if it's FOB destination, you did not really complete the sale until the product was received by the customer. When did the when did the when did the product was received by the customer? The product was received January 2nd, year 6. It means this sale cannot be recorded December 31st, year 5. That's all what's to it. It looks intimidating. It's a lot of information. Well, guess what? We cannot book this transaction. What does that mean? It means we have to reduce our revenue by 450, reduce our cost by 450. Obviously, we have to also reduce account receivable and inventory, but we are not giving the balance sheet here. So what does that mean from as far as we are concerned as this exercise? As far as we are concerned, we have to reduce revenue by 450,000 because the sale was FOB destination. It was not our sale. And the cost of goods sold has to be reduced by 350 because we increase our cost. Now this revenue and sales will be booked in the following year, but for this year we have to back out the revenue, we have to back out the sale. This is basically what we needed to do. And it's all based on the concept, do you know what FOB destination is? FOB destination, you did not really complete the transaction until you deliver it, you deliver the product. So the inventory is yours until you deliver it. Well, we did not deliver it until year six. Therefore, year five, it cannot be considered revenue and we cannot remove the inventory from our books. That's it. So we adjusted revenue and cost of goods sold. And I don't believe there's anything about revenue and cost of goods sold. Here, they're asking us about general and administrative expenses. And they're telling us about research and development and sales and marketing. So they're giving us three expenses and we might have to adjust them. Now, what did you see information about those accounts? Well, research and development, we saw information about this account here. So let's take a look at this because everything else has to do with the other thing is interest. So we have other information about interest, but this is not what we are doing now. So here's what we are told. This is the R&D expense account. They're giving you the basically the, the ledger for this. 128 year five, 
engineering cost to develop specification for a prototype. Is this is research and development cost? Yes, it is. Material consumed to develop a prototype for project A. Is this research and development? It is. Market research to evaluate the potential sales price. So here we go. Now you have to understand. R&D, R&D, research and development, it's when you are researching, actually doing some work to find a new way of a new way, a new, a new idea, a new product. Marketing cost, market research to evaluate potential sales is not R&D. What does that mean? It means we need to back out this number out of research and development. So this number cannot be in research and development. This, this number, 215, is basically marketing, sales and marketing. So it should not be there. Third party contract service provided to test the prototype. That's research and development 502. We don't have to do anything about this one. Recognition of year five salaries for R&D personnel. Well, R&D personnel, that's research and development. Recognition of year five corporate accounting and finance salaries. Is this research and development? That's not research and development. So what we find out here, there are two numbers. The 215, we need to get it out of the research and development account. And the 183, I need to get it out of the research and development account. Simply put, I need to back out of the research and development account the total of these two figures. What does that mean? It means if I go back here, so it's 183 plus 215. So I'm just going to go 183 plus 215, 398. Simply put, from R&D, I have to back out 398,000 because they don't belong there. Okay, negative. I have to bag them out. It means negative. I bag them out of there. I have to put them somewhere else. Where do I put them? Well, remember the, the marketing, the marketing, we had a marketing of 215. The marketing goes under sales and marketing. So of that amount, 215 goes under sales and marketing. Okay, basically, this is a reclassification. And the 183 was for something else. Let me go back. I forgot what was it about. Oh, a, a, accounting and finance services. And 183, 183 goes into accounting and services. So basically what I did, I reclassified 398,000 out of the research and development and into general and administrative and sales and marketing. And all what you needed to do is know the definition of R&D, the knowing those two expenses should not be there. So that's why they gave you this list. When they give you something, scan it first, but when they're asking you to kind of Adjust R&D, you have to look at this. So you have to read it and understand those two should not be there. So we're done with this. We're done with this. Gain on disposal. We have a gain on disposal of 300,000. And they're saying we might have to make an adjustment here. Gain on disposal. Let's see. Um, summary. Let's see. What, what do we have here? Mm, depreciation. Notice here. Summary 2. Uh, summary year five result from segment B. So this is a result of segment. Uh, let's see in additional information. Oh, October 26. Notice here. Oak sold segment B, a major line of business that represents a strategic shift in the company's operation. This is the keyword and recognize a pre tax gain of 300,000. Is this how we deal? Is this how we book? a transaction such as selling a major line of business. No, this is not a gain. This is a discontinued of operation. So it should not be as a gain. It should not be as a gain. So what does that mean? It means this 300,000 here should not be here. Is it, this is not a gain. So what is it if it's not a gain? Well, that's a discontinued operation. So first of all, I have to take it out of here. So 300,000 positive, so I can take it so I can, uh, oops, not 3 million, 300,000. So I can net this out. There is no gain. And I have to, where do I have to put it? I have to put it under discontinued operation. So if I take it out of there, it has to go somewhere else because I took that gain. It has to go somewhere else. Well, here I have a gain on discontinued operation from another party. Now I'm going to increase that gain by 300,000. And remember, they told you to put the gain as negative. So the gain goes here. So the 300,000 also a misclassification. It came out of the gain account. Let me just close this. It came out of this account and it went into this account. Okay, and remember the gain is has to be a negative put, put for the instruction. Okay, so that's that. So interest expense. 
uh, they recorded interest expense of 356 to 50 and it's based on this computation no not this computation where do we have the interest expense uh, I believe we had the interest expense general ledger let me, let me take a look at it um, now this is the debt memorandum the information I believe they gave us the interest oh, research and development interest expense general ledger details so this is how they come up with the interest expense they're saying interest expense is 356 to 50. so the question is is this is this the correct interest expense because here they're telling you um you might have let me show you here 356 to 50 do you have to make an adjustment for that so simply put what you have to do is have you you have to recompute the interest if the interest should supposed to be 356 to 50 you don't touch it it's good to go if it's something else other than 356 to 50 then you have to do something about it so what do you have to do you have to kind of compute compute the interest expense all right so let's take a look at what we have here uh that 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 uh, ar arrangement so we borrowed um we borrowed uh, $10 million and we made the first semi-annual principal payment. So we made a principal payment on on uh, on July 1st, year five of a million of a million. So we borrowed 10, we're down to 9 million. Uh, variable six month labor as quoted at the beginning of each period plus two plus 2.5. So let's find out what should be our interest expense for the first six months because this is what we are giving. So it's 2.5 plus LIBOR. So at the beginning of the period, January 1st, January 1st, it's 1.25. What does that mean? It means you're going to take, you're going to take your balance was, let's get the calculator here. Your balance was $10 million. Clear the tape. You had You had $10 million. Okay, then you're going to multiply it by 2.5 plus 1.25, 3.75, Oops. 10 million times 0 0.0375. That's equal to 375,000, and we're going to multiply this by 0 0.5 because it's for six months. So 187,500 for the first six months. Let's see if it's 187,500. So let me go back to that interest expense. 187,500. So the first month they computed properly. Okay. Now we have to do the, we have to compute the second six month, not the first month. The first, the first six month is computed properly. Now, what happened is this: after we made our first payment, we used to have 10 million worth of worth of debt remember we made the interest payment then we said we paid a million down we paid a million down so our balance is 9 million now again we have to compute the interest expense what's the interest expense for the second six month well it's 2.5 plus LIBOR went up to 1.5 so 2.5 plus 1.5 equal to 4 percent times 0.04 that's equal to 360,000, but we're only computed this for six months times 0.5. That's 180,000. Well, it's supposed to be 180,000 based on my computation. They're recorded at 168,750. I have to make an adjustment. I have to increase my interest expense by the difference. So 180 minus 168,750, 11,250. What does that mean? It means I have to increase my interest expense by 11,000. 250. So I'm going to go down here to my interest expense and increase my interest expense by 11 to 50. So that's my interest expense. That's my interest expense. Now I have to, it seems here, I, I there's maybe I have to do something about my income tax expense slash income tax benefit, which is C15, C15. Well, well, what happened is this. Here's what happened. I increased my, uh, I inc simply put, I made adjustments. I, ma I made adjustments, especially for my revenues and cost of goods sold. Okay, those were actual adjustments. Uh, my gain was readjusted. My, my, I'm sorry, my, my gain was reclassified. I increased, I increased my interest expense. So all in all, 
Now, my income from continuing operation before income taxes is 411250 Now, I need to find out what's my tax rate. My tax rate is 20%. So, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to take, let me clear the tape. I have to compute my my adjustments, basically, for 11250 times 0 0.2. That's 82250 So, that's my income, basically, is reduced by that much is reduced by that much um, my income is reduced why because remember I had a gain and that gain is gone you had three hundred thousand dollar gain but that gain is gone I was taxed on that now I'm no longer taxed on that therefore I have to reduce it overall my income tax expense by eighty two thousand two fifty okay now what's gonna happen that three hundred thousand will be you know that that I removed it from the gain it's gonna go down and it's gonna be taxed again somewhere else but the point is I'm done with my income tax adjustment I did my gain from disposal now income tax or benefit on the discontinued operation look you had a gain you had a gain uh, $300,000 gain well you have to pay taxes on that gain how much is the taxes 20% well guess what then you have income tax expense and hopefully you know this 300,000 times 20% is 60,000 let me just show you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna multiply 300,000 times 0 0.2 equal to oops times 0 0.2 equal to 60,000 60,000 so I'm gonna have to let me clear it again I have $300,000 gain from discontinued operation it has to be reported net of tax so I have to pay taxes of 60,000 I have to pay tax of 60,000 that's an increase to my expenses that's 60,000 now my gain net of tax is 240 why because I had a gain of 300,000 but I had to pay taxes of 60,000 okay now what else do I have left basically I'm, I did everything because this is computed and net income is computed so basically I'm done with the income statement that's basically what I'm supposed to do okay now additional information here um, you can find information about the uh, tax let me see what you got the information oak okay, effective income tax rate is 20 percent so just want to let you know where i got the tax information from all right now we're not done with this uh we're not done with this you're going to have to compute the total assets and the total liability so you have a little bit of work on the balance sheet now use the information in the table above and the anal analytics definition exhibit to determine the effects on oaks total assets and liabilities okay enter increases of total assets and total liabilities as positive whole numbers and and, and the decreases as negative if no adjustments to total assets or liabilities then leave the cell blank so don't put anything amount in cell d2 and d3 would calculate automatically that's good I don't have to do the computation just have to input the number in d4 enter the return on asset then applying any required adjustment to total assets and total liabilities as a percentage round to the two decimal point so what did it change in my total asset so when I did all these adjustments did my total asset change and the answer is yes remember my account receivable I reduced my revenue I also reduced my receivable and my cost of goods sold so simply put here's what happened for my let me get the calculator here when I removed 450 of revenue when I removed 450 of revenues I also removed 450 of assets so I have I removed 450 minus so I removed that much from my assets but I also added back to my inventory 350 why because I debited inventory when I credited cost of goods sold simply put my assets went down 100,000 because I removed 450 and I added 350 my assets went down 100,000 for so for this adjustments overall my assets went down for this one this one and this one those were reclassification all what happened is I took the expense I, I took the expenses out of here and put them in here so there's nothing there's no effect on my assets there's no effect on my liabilities gain on the disposal practically the same thing except that it's gonna affect my income tax but gain on the disposal doesn't really affect anything for my assets basically also a reclassification interest expense well I, I I added more interest expense I'm gonna debit interest expense credit liability which is gonna affect my liability uh, income tax benefits same thing it's not gonna affecting my asset I don't have any benefit gain from discontinued operation it was a reclassification 
um, and this has to do with the discontinued operation, the income tax expense or benefit. So practically all what happened is my assets went down by 100,000 because I removed that. I removed one 450 of receivable, but I also added back 350 of inventory. So the net effect is re reduction of my assets of 100,000. Now what happened to my liabilities is my interest, I had an adjustment to my interest expense. My interest expense went up. Okay, so my interest expense went up. What else happened? My interest expense went up. My income tax benefit, I had benefit here, went down because I saved money. Then my, in, my income tax expense went up again. So simply put, it mostly has to do with interest expense. Mostly has to do with interest expense. I'm sorry, interest and taxes. So I added... 11,250 of interest expense, which in turn added 11,250 of liabilities because the entry is your debit interest expense, you credit interest liability. So I added 11,250 of liabilities. Then income tax expense went down. So my li basically my liabilities went down. That's going to be a minus 82,250. 82,250. That's minus 71,000. Then income tax expense went up, which is debit income tax expense, credit income tax liability. I added 60,000 of liabilities. So it's, it's, in, it's, it's, it's interest expense and income tax expense, which is under corresponding liability. So overall, 11,000 reduction in my liabilities, 11,000 reduction in my liabilities. So it's the liabilities is minus 11,000. Okay, so simply put, this is basically my uh, final year end assets, final year end liabilities, and those are year four assets and year four liabilities. That's what we are giving. That's what we are giving. Now the question becomes: compute return on asset. So how do you compute return on asset? That that that's that's the question. Well, return on asset. Let's see how. Uh, we'll have to be very careful because it, they're giving us the analytic analytics definition. Analytics uh, definition. Return on asset. Let's take a look at return on asset. Return on asset is net income divided by the average total asset. So we have net income, we have the new net income, we, have, we use the this net income. So our net income is 1,311,250. And we're going to take net income and we compute net income based on the average asset. What is the average asset? It's year one plus year two divided by two. So let's take a look and compute compute this figure. So let's find the average first. Let's clear the tape. So we have year one, 45 million, 25,000, plus 44,975. Let me do it again. Clear the tape. Okay. 45 million, 25,000, plus. 44,975,000. 90 million divide this number by two. And the average asset is 45 million. Now I'm going to take 13 million, which is my net income, my adjusted net income, my, adjust, my new net income. So return on asset. And why do you compute by the, why do you divide by the average? Because the income statement is, is a period number. It's for the whole period. And the balance sheet is a point of time. That's why you have to compute both. You have to make sure you're using uh, the beginning and the end of the year because that income covers the beginning all the way till the end of the year. So the, so the, the denominator has to, has to cover the same period. So one million three hundred eleven thousand divided by forty five million. That's equal to two two point nine one. Therefore, the answer two point nine one one three two point nine one. So return on asset is two point nine one. And here they're giving you the format percentage. That's fine. Two point nine one percent. As I said, this I would say this simulation. I would say it's challenging. Yes, it is. It's uh, it's uh, 
it, it include both knowledge from your college studies and you have to be familiar with because in college we don't give you those general ledgers those general ledgers you'll see them in the real world that's why i believe it's challenging also the general ledger here or unless you took an accounting information system which is not at all all colleges offer accounting information system so you have to know how to read the information that you are giving so overall the material the content is not difficult the content is straightforward and easy but the way the information is presented is is difficult so what's the point i'm trying to make is you gotta get yourself familiarized with those simulations so they don't intimidate you one way to do it is to be very familiar with the information and the way to do it is to go to my website subscribe to my the cpa lessons it's an investment in your career i can help you study hard and good luck and i'm always here to help